Welcome back to 1.3. Now we're on day two, 1.3, talking about distance. Uh, again, this one's already filled out, so if at any point you need to pause to write some stuff down and then come back and hear the explanation, that'd be great. What we're talking about here is, again, we're going to show you two points. We're going to give you a coordinate plane. You can plot the points, draw on the line segment, but we want the distance between the two points. Now, you can say, okay, this is x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and use the distance formula here, and substitute these numbers in, and get the answer. But what you're going to notice if you look at example 1, remember how last section we would get maybe a radical answer that wasn't a perfect square, so square root of you know, 57 or, or something like that, and we would just leave it at that, or use our calculator and turn it into a decimal. Well, look what happened here. Square root of 100, that's 10. Look what happened over here. Square root of 16, that's 4. Let's look at what the pictures look like. Example 1, when we plot these two points, we get a vertical line, and in example 2, we plot the points, we get a horizontal line. You can always use the distance formula to get the length of a line segment, to get the distance between two points. But sometimes you might want to go, and, and here it is, you can see all the work right here. Take these, plot your coordinates, throw them into the equation, get the answer. But the thing is, sometimes you want to go a little bit faster. So if you notice that you have a vertical line segment or a horizontal line segment, you can actually just get the length of that segment just by counting. So you just start here and just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh, it's 10. How about over here? It's horizontal. 1, 2, 3, 4. The one thing you don't do, don't count the one you start on. I've seen people do that before. So don't go, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Start at the end point and just count as you go. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see because this is vertical and horizontal, we could have just got these answers just from counting. Okay. If you want to use the distance formula, go ahead. But when we, especially when we're on maybe like a unit test, we're trying to save time and make things as easy for us as possible. If I have a coordinate plane and I plot my two points and I see it's vertical or horizontal, I'm probably just going to count. Now, sometimes we don't have a coordinate plane, right? Well, how did we get these answers, if you look for this section, how do we get these answers so quickly without having to do the distance formula. Well, it the answer to that lies in if you look at the coordinates of the points. Look at these coordinates here. Do you see how when we drew it, it was a vertical line segment? And do you notice how they have the same x coordinate? And when it was a horizontal line segment, look at their coordinates they have the same y coordinate. So what that's going to tell you is, you know, all vertical line segments have the same x values for their uh, end points, and all horizontal line segments have the same y values. So what you can do is just look at the, look at the coordinate that's not the same and subtract those to get the distance. That's another way you can get the distance if you don't have, for example, a coordinate plane where you can just count. So here's what I mean. See how these two endpoints of my segment have both have a 3 for x? Ignore those. Just look at the other, at the y values. Subtract them. 4 minus negative 6. What's 4 minus negative 6? That's 4 plus 6. That's 10. You could, now remember, we're talking about distance, so it has to be positive, right? So let's go over here. The y's are the same, so we're just going to subtract the x's, because it's a horizontal segment, 0 minus negative 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. Now if I had gone right to left, if I had done negative 4 minus 0, we're not going to say that the distance is negative 4, because we're doing the absolute value. What's the absolute value of negative 4? So that's what this is saying here. When you're determining the distance between two points with either the same x-coordinates or the same y-coordinate, you just calculate the difference of the two unlike coordinates. So, 
these have the same x coordinate. So if I want to know the distance between these two points, I don't need a distance formula. I don't need a coordinate plane. I don't need anything. I'm just going to ignore. Oops. I'm just going to ignore the two that are the same, and I'm going to say what's 10 minus 5? 5. That's the distance between the two points because they're going to line up on a coordinate plane vertically. Here's negative 2, 5, and here's negative 2, 10 would be up here, and we could just count, right? Okay. Same thing here. These have the same y. What's negative 7 minus 9? That's negative 16. Take the absolute value of it. Distance between the points is 16. These have the same y, subtract the x's, get your answer. This shortcut for distance only works for vertical or horizontal segments. So that means segments that have either the same x coordinate or the same y coordinate. If you need to go back and rewind that, watch it again, go ahead. Again, if you need further clarification, come see me. Now we get to a question that was um, kind of tough for some people in the past. I want you to just follow this process, okay? What we have here is a point A and a point B. And A and B are going to make a line segment called segment AB. Somewhere on segment AB is going to be point C. We don't know exactly where point C is going to be but we know that it's going to divide the segment into this ratio. So what you do is plot this point, negative 4, negative 2, here's A. Plot this point, 6, negative 2, here's B. Connect them. So this is our segment AB. Now I know that C is going to go here because I already did all the work, but you're not going to know this right now. All you're going to have is A and B and you draw this horizontal segment. Okay? Now. We're going to put point C somewhere on this line segment, and we know two things. We know that C is closer to A than it is to B, and we know that it cuts it into the ratio 2 to 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this horizontal segment over here. Here's A, here's B, draw the segment. We're just going to put C somewhere here because we know it's closer to A, right? When they tell me a ratio, this is something we're going to, we use ratios a lot this year. When they say 2 to 3, you're not going to write a 2 here and a 3 here. You're going to write a 2x and you're going to write a 3x. That's what the ratio means. 2x, 3x. It's a, it means for every 2 that this has, this guy gets 3. So if this is 2, then this is 3. If this is 4, this is 6. If this is 6, this is 9, and so on. So now what we're going to do is just what we said at the very first two examples. We have AB already drawn on our coordinate plane. Just count or subtract the x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The whole thing, AB equals 10. But we also know from the segment addition postulate that 2x plus 3x equals 10. So that's where this came from. 2x plus 3x equals 10. That means 5x equals 10. That means x equals 2. Well, if x equals 2, AC is 4 units long. And if uh, x equals 2, CB is 6 units long. Now double check. Is 4 plus 6 equal to 10? Yeah. So what this is telling us is if I start at A and I go right 4, I end up at C. So go over to your diagram. Just count 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's where C is. So when they ask me what's the coordinates of point C, the coordinates of point C are 0, negative 2. This is the answer. <clears throat> so why don't you go ahead and try example 4. You can pause it now. Try example 4, unpause it, and then I'll show you the answer. Is this what you got? It's the same kind of thing, it's just vertical. They go, gave me C, they gave me T, draw it out. I know that A is closer to T, so when I write CT over here, I put A closer to the bottom. Right? When they tell me it goes into the ratio 1 to 3, it's 
1x to 3x. Why did I put the 3x here and the 1x here? Because a is closer to t, so a is the shorter one. So I have to put the smaller number with it. So I put the 1x with here, and I put the 3x with the longer side. Now I go back here and count, and it's 12. ct is 12. So 3x plus 1x equals 12. So 4x equals 12, so x is 3. Well, what's 1? 1x means 1 times x. So what's 1 times 3? If x is 3, 1 times 3 is 3. What's 3 times 3? 9. Does 9 plus 3 equal 12? Yes, it does. So now I go to t. I'm going to count up 3, and that's where a is. That's the answer. Now, I want you to try example 5 on your own. Notice they didn't give you as much uh, information for number 5. It's a little bit tougher. But pause it, try 5, come back and check. Here's my two answers. One in red, one in blue. Now, why did examples 3 and 4 have only one possible coordinate while 5 has two? Because in 3 and 4, they told you which endpoint the point was closer to. In example 5, they said, here's A, here's B. We're going to put C on the line segment AB somewhere. But they didn't tell you if C was closer to A or closer to B. So you had to do two different calculations. You had to do one as if C is closer to A, and you had to do one as if C is closer to B. Right? So you count it up. From here to here, A, B is 14. So it's going to be 2x plus 5x. Look, the ratio is 2 to 5. 2x plus 5x is going to equal 14. x equals 2. So you're either going to have 4, 10, or 10, 4. We just don't know because they didn't tell us which one C was closer to. So if C is closer to A, then this segment is 4. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my answer. If C is closer to B, then the bottom segment is 4. So you count 4 up from B. 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are my two possible answers because they didn't give me any other information. This is a question that um, gave people a lot of difficulty on the first Chapter 1 test. So make sure you understand this and come in and get some extra help if you need it or watch this over again. All right. This is the last section before the first quiz. So if you understand everything we've done up to this point, you should be ready to go. Have confidence, take, you know, do the review, be ready for the first quiz. If you're looking at the review and, and looking at these videos, look at these notes and saying you still don't understand something, you've got to come in and get that taken care of before the quiz so that we can help you out so you can get ready and start off with a good score. All right. See you later.